Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Creating a Village. What up, gang? Today's <laughs> today's a very special episode. Actually, today we have a new format. Um, this format is going to be called Village Voice, and it's where we'll take questions from the village and we'll just ask them to whatever guest is on. Um, for that episode so yes but for those who are new i'm your host millie here to help nurture the village within you Ooh. and <laughs> and as you can see we have a very very special guest with us today can you please introduce yourself for the audience oh it did it it did the hard time oh my that's so cute is, right my name is muna Hilouf. i am a social media specialist and just all around loving, fun person. I'm super excited to be here with you guys. Yes, Woo. no, she really is an all around loving person. Like she's the best person in the world. Oh, oh. my goodness, Wait. my whole heart. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, um, Jesus. <laughs> I know, no pressure. But, no pressure at all. But so for Village Voice, like I was saying earlier, we're just gonna sit down with different guests to explore life's pivotal themes through mm -hmm. casual yet effective conversations. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do the, what is this called? I'm going to spin the wheel so we can come up with a question. Mm -hmm. The wheel is spinning. Spin it's spinning. <laughs> and it has landed on the number six. Yay. Okay. What? So what is question number six? Question number six is, tell us about a unique tradition or value from your culture that has significantly influenced you. So before we even get into that, I guess we should kind of like introduce our backgrounds, our cultures, like how we see that for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so that's a great question. I come from two backgrounds if you will at least i consider them that way because of how um life has kind of taught me they are separate mm. um i am african-american in the sense that my mother was born in america she is her parents are black they grew up in like oklahoma and i think kansas or something like that but my father is straight from ethiopia um, specifically the country of Tigray, which is like in the middle of Ethiopia and Eritrea. So okay. I've had very different upbringings in some ways, but very similar upbringings or up mm -hmm. and upbringing because I'm acting like I had seven lives. <laughs> it feels like it sometimes. Let me just say. No, you can get seven lives in, in one. <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, yeah, in a lot of ways, they're extremely different. And then in some ways, I'll say spiritually, um, when it comes to like family values, of course, uh, even language and conversation in some ways are similar, uh, mm. uh, but everything else is, is pretty, <laughs> pretty different. So um, from a Black American standpoint, um, I, well, I, before I get into that, go ahead and I guess express your background, me. Um, yes. As far as I know, I'm I'm black. I like to say I'm black because African American to me is like I have some connection, like gen like knowing connection to Africa. Mm -hmm. And as far as I know, I don't know that that's <laughs> that's the thing I know. <laughs> um, so I'll say like I I identify as black. Um, <laughs> and my mom is from Atlanta, Georgia. I grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. And my dad is from New Jersey. So, yeah. And I know I have a culture, but majority of the time, I just feel like I just be living life. I feel like my culture is America, American. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I have been asked if I was Ethiopia. We could be related. For sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. When I first saw your mom, I was like, Somalian something. You're somewhere. So She's uh, uh, Okay. No, I definitely want to do like an ancestry test though to see Wait, what's like, going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because my my dad had an aunt who maybe she passed like last year or the year before, mm -hmm. but we found out um, that she was from 
I don't think she was from St. Vincent, but she was from an island nice. over there. And I was like, oh, okay. So my dad is probably something. And there's like a, there's an island that the Milligans are like an actual thing okay. on. Okay. And so we were like, oh, okay. But we, we never explored more into it. Um, gotcha. Yes. <laughs> I, to be honest with you, I would like just recalling why Ethi me being o Ethiopian is like a thing mm -hmm. in school when people would ask me my name and I would say Muna. I'm a kid, so I think it's regular, right? I'm like, yeah. Muna. They're like, you know, what's that? <laughs> So that, you know, I believe that I would have the same kind of like experience as far as like, I'm American, you know, yeah. Um, if it had not been for like that kind of like side eye that I get from everybody, mm. even just with like, without me saying anything with me talking, because I don't have like an accent or anything like that. So even with, you know, me talking, they're just like, I knew you were something when I said <laughs> You know, it's just like, okay, you're making this weird. I'm not. No. Yeah, no, because that's why I'm not. I knew you were something. Excuse me? A human? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember this one time this dude was like, Muna. I was like, yeah, he was like, is it short for something? I said, what would it be short for? Let me just hear where you're going with this. What would this be short for? I don't know, like, show Muna. Okay, bye. That's, that's it. I'm I'm good. Have Wait a minute, that. not Shamuna, like Shabuya, Sh -sh -sh Shabuya. <laughs> Roll call, I'm done, weak, quite literally. No, that is so funny. Yeah, Wait, okay, I'm sorry if there's a Shamuna out there, that's a nice Why? name. Oh, sorry, Lil Muna. <laughs> well, okay, so the sidebar, I, I have Nigerian friends, like Nigerian and Ghanaian friends, and so in Ghana, Muna, no, in Nigerian, Muna Chi means like God is in me. But mm. then in Ghana, my Muna is like sister, like you're, you're everybody's sister. So Muna, uh, right? I was like that. Yeah. Both, both of those are you. Those like, are you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. You know, make sense now. Because <laughs> I do. I feel like I, I call myself, I think it's on my Instagram. I call myself everybody's favorite cousin. I just. I love yes. people. I love people. Yes, and people love you. Okay. I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> I love you. Okay, that was just a sidebar. So back to the question. I forgot what the question was. How does your environment or how does your background what? Um, tell us about a unique tradition or value from your culture that has significantly influenced you. So from my mother's side... We like Christmas is a thing with my family. Mm -hmm. um, Christmas in the sense of like how we spend it, time spent together. Uh, Thanksgiving is not really as important as it is in most, like you know, most Black families. Yeah. Um, and like I've seen, pe you know, people celebrate all types of stuff together. <laughs> we come together for you know, yes. for things. But having Christmas, like us, all of us being together for Christmas is a is a huge thing in my family. And so that has taught me like the value of like hosting people mm. and, and really showing up for people in the way that I do in my own life, like separate from my family, being that favorite cousin, being that sister. Um, yeah. My grandma will like, so my grandma cooks the waffles, my grandpa uh -huh. cooks the pancakes, and then me and my auntie like do the meats and stuff like that. So like cooking for the kids, um, making sure that our elders get a plate, you know, um, the banter of cooking, small stuff like letting your uncle try to bake it, make sure it's crispy, you know, all the little yeah. things just to create that level of like really love, grace, community again. So that that I'll say has influenced how I show up in all settings with people. I just try to be like of service, if you will. Um, but still, of course, like be myself like I'm not. Yeah, we'll, we'll unpack that later. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And then on my dad's side, I, I'd say similar. Um, one of the things that we do is called gursha. So with that it, food, I'm hungry. Okay. So like both of these examples are based on food. No, I um, really. Okay. okay. When, you're, when you're first trying Ethiopian food or like what we call injetta, 
um, the person who is like the oldest in the household or the person who invited the person who's trying the food mm -hmm. will grab like the first bite and it's not no small bite. It's like, uh, like enough to fill my hand. So we eat with our mm -hmm. hands. Let me start there. Right hand only because the left hand is used for other things that we uh -huh. shall not name on this podcast. Amen. Um, so okay. yeah, right hand only. And you have to basically grab the food inside of the bread, the injetta, mm -hmm. and you let the person eat from your hand. Ah. Those so called good. Okay. Same thing builds community for me. Um, it shows me the value of sharing and just like helping people to feel welcome in a space where they're not like, you know, it's not a normal environment. Oh, that's so nice. I didn't even think of like that connection mm -hmm. of like the outside people. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it was like a, um, like a way for people to kind of like tribally connect as well. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit of history about like Ethiopia and Eritrea in particular. They um, have been kind of at war for a while. The reason my dad came over here is because he's a refugee from that particular war. So, um, there's there's been a lot of like just hard relations between um the cultures people who are like closer to uh the mediterranean sea and then those of course who are more like inland so it was a way of people to kind of just bring in tribal peace like small things um sharing coffee with each other you know it's, it's a lot of little traditions but that that's the main one that's like that's taught me how to just share be kind, loving, mm -hmm. community centered. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that is so nice. I went to an Ethiopian restaurant for the first time like last week. I went to um Desta. Yes. Yes. It was so nice. Hi. Yeah. And like they said you eat with your hands. After a while, it's like, okay, let me just put all this on my plate. <laughs> but it was really nice. The food was really good. Good. The tea, like they had um uh like when you ask for a tea, they give you spiced water before, mm -hmm. like without the tea. And I was like, oh, this is nice. Don't even need no honey. It's just, it was really nice. It was a really nice experience. So tea is called shahi in our country. Mm, shahi. Yeah. They they do they put like a like in the coffee they put brown sugar and cinnamon. It's it's a mm. lot of little things that they do that's like, oh okay. Yeah. Um, but the next time you go, don't go to Desta. I smiled, but don't go to Desta. <laughs> okay. Desta is not authentic. Desta is the bougie Ethiopian food. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, I was just going with a friend. They're like, oh, yeah, let's go to Desta. I was like, sure. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you said you enjoyed it, but did you, you like the food? It, was it too spicy? Or just kind of tell me your experience. Um, I enjoyed it. The person who ordered, like, um, they ordered lamb. Mm -hmm. steak or beef uh there was a fish that i was yeah. not a fan of like i don't know what it was but the texture i don't know it was weird but there's shrimp and then there was the lentils i really yeah. like the lentils the lentils are really good mm -hmm. um and i really like the cabbage yeah the cabbage is really good too yeah and the what's the bread called again injetta injetta yeah okay when I was first eating, I was like, okay, I could get behind this. And then after a while, it was like, no more bread, oh. just food. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. that sourdough taste, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, no, because it would, and I also think I probably wasn't getting a lot of food inside of it because it would be like, I would eat the food and then it would just be the bread left. And because the bread doesn't have like that much of a taste, it was like, mm -hmm. I'm just chewing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm just going to leave you over there. <laughs> we're gonna participate in this yes and now i need a fork <laughs> nice That's yeah so but nice. i liked it it's always cool to hear okay so what about you what oh, what yeah. um how has your community and your background shaped your experiences or like how you show mm -hmm. it yeah i'll say definitely seeing my family they're just okay let me think when I think of like my childhood and what I remember most or like what I feel like influenced me most to be like who I am today, I see my aunt and just how generous she was with like my cousins and family in general, 
not even family, strangers and people mm-hmm. who who say they need assistance. I feel like you're having a flashback, like <laughs> subtle, subtle yes. situation. Yeah, because I I don't know people's situations, but sometimes you know it seems like people can take advantage, but yeah. you know give them benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Um, and then like my mom, my mom was extremely involved, like in my school life. Um, like when I transferred elementary schools, because I'll say seven under, my mom was like working at Delta, so I didn't see her that often. But gotcha. then after that, like as she had my sister, she was like always around the PTA meetings, teachers know her, just involved volunteering all the time. Yeah. Um, and I feel like that's kind of like who I am today. But I'll say like my family, we're not particularly like a close knit family. Mm-hmm. Like we see each other and it's nice. Um, so I think like my most influential moments of like from my childhood are kind of seeing my mom and my aunt and even my dad, like on occasion, just out in community mm-hmm. and being there for people. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. No, that was that was a, yeah. that was good. <laughs> I was thinking about you and I talking. Um, you know, we were at New Birth and you were telling me mm-hmm. like you guys eat dinner together, every, or you know, not every Sunday, mm-hmm. but you you eat dinner together. I don't think that was me because I haven't eaten like together with my family probably since elementary school. I thought at your dad's house or something like that. Oh well, no. Okay, recently, like. Because my dad has moved into, like, a bigger house. He, like, will host, like, Thanksgiving or, like, with the holidays now. And so his family will come down from, like, New Jersey, Minnesota. And then now we're eating together. But, yeah, no, like, on a regular basis. Okay. Someone's in their room. Not someone. I'm in my room. (laughs) Uh, Like, we're just scattered all over the place. And that definitely comes from, like... I think we ate more as a family because we were all kind of eating the same things. Mm -hmm. But then my dad became a raw vegan, um, like for health reasons. And so then there's just like this split of food and, you know, different timetables for when this is going to be done. And eh, there's a lot of factors, but it just kind of stopped. Yeah, I got you. you. Yeah. So, I mean, we're cool like yeah yeah but we're just family (laughs) yeah no I I understand that my my home life or like my childhood is kind of scattered as well in that way um my mom and dad like my parents only child is me I'm Mm -hmm. the only one that they had together my dad had a child with another woman my mom had a child with another man before me Mm-hmm. Oh, my dad actually had two kids. I just thought about his brother. So, like, everybody scattered. And then both of them got remarried, and they had kids. And so I'm the only yeah. person that, like, combines everybody. It's, like, ten of us. Mm-hmm. And I'm the only person in the middle that, like, makes everybody's relationship make sense. So I get okay. it. I get it. Oh, that's yeah. so nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe, you know. <laughs> it's exhausting. I can say that, uh-huh. you know. But again, like, I think all of our influ- like our our experiences, rather, are building us to be who we're going to become, you mm-hmm. know? So when I sit and I pray and I think about, like, why God allowed me to be in the middle of the spaghetti junction, you know, I'm like, obviously, I'm yeah. going to have, like, some sort of Fortune 500 company or something. No, I, I've been thinking that recently. And like, as I've been kind of reading the Bible, like, you know, the whole like Proverbs 31 woman, mm-hmm. and just like, kind of looking back on like Bible culture and how when a woman gets married, they move into the family home versus like, just straight off going off with the husband. And so it's kind of made me think differently about how I'm approaching my mm-hmm. family dynamics because I have a blended family as well. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> the way I was about to say this was good. Okay. So I have an older brother um, mm-hmm. on my dad's side and I I have an older sister on my dad's side. Um, and so like 
when I was thinking, and my dad's an entrepreneur. So mm-hmm. at first I was thinking, oh, and then the, ho- the home that we're in now, my dad is like, I want this to be a family home. So just coming from the Bible perspective of the firstborn gets the, the stuff home. or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the home, <laughs> businesses, okay. And for a while, the responsibility was kind of like falling on me because my brother's in journalism. He knows what he wants to do. And I just happen to be like the main person that people go to for things. But then I was thinking, okay, well, I'll let my brother, you know, if I don't know when he's going to get married. I don't even think he's like thinking about it. But I was thinking, what happens if he gets married? Who, how does this house thing work? What is all this going on? Mm -hmm. And then I have an older sister that comes into the picture. So now I'm like, okay, do we get these things? Like, but I'm realizing in actuality, a lot of the things people, my dad, my mom, they come to me and they're like, these are things that need to be taken care of if we're not here. And I'm like, I'm not the only person here. (laughs) But everything like keeps coming to me. I'm like, okay, I understand. And I'm trying to get into being more responsible and actually paying attention. I pay attention, but, you know, keeping it in my head. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, oh, these are where files are. This is what. Okay. But I I still think it's crazy because I'm not the oldest. (laughs) I'm not. I get it. I get it. I, I, I get it. You're not alone. I get it. <laughs> I'm the third from the youngest, so I'm like, oh, okay. It's about 18 of y'all in front of me. I digress. <laughs> I digress. You're the uh, Joseph of the family. Ah. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He got sold. <laughs> <laughs> just keep living. Life's going to feel like that. No, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. No. God, God forbid. Yeah. But that's a, that's a nice perspective to look at it from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He got sold. Uh, he was treated differently, but it paid again. It paid off. There was a reason because it's not just family. It can't be, you know. Yeah. God, God knows what we need. It can't just be family. So it has to be something that allows um, for all these things to make sense, man. Yeah. Even though it may be 30 years from now. I don't know how long. He, what was he in prison for? 10 years? 13 years? Mm, yeah. I don't know no facts. Like <laughs> It was just a long. It was unnecessary. It was a long time. It was unnecessary. I got you. Got you. Yes. Thank you so much for coming on, Muna. This is Thank great. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Girl. It ain't nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was nervous because I was like, I've never done this, but anyway. No, you're great. See, it's just like we're just chatting on FaceTime. It's... But um, if you want the people to find you places, uh, please leave your social medias, your websites, your anything. <laughs> Everything pretty much is um, connected to my Instagram. My name is Muna Ng. That's M U N A. I-N-G, because I be being myself. I'm Muna Ng. Um, oh, and that's so cute. Thank you. No, I never even realized that. Was, okay. Yeah, I be, I be Muna Ng. That's, that's, what it, that's where it came from. Um, it's so funny, because, like, I started my Instagram when it was, like, 2010, and, like, Ng has become a whole thing right now. You know, like, I'm momming, I'm dadding, you know, like. Oh, like, oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, it's become Adulting. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so I'm like, oh, this is you started good. the trend. You just maybe. starting all the trends. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I'm that important yet, but I plan on. Nah, I don't know. Anyway, that was weird. Um, so Muna Ng is my Instagram. You can find me pretty much anywhere else from there. Uh, but on Facebook, my name is Muna Hiluf, which is my last name. Yeah, H I L U F as in Frank. Uh, yeah. So that's where you can find me. Cool. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. I hope you learned something. I hope you, I hope you had fun sitting in on this chat. Um, yes, 
you know, do all the things. If you have any other questions like you want to ask or suggest for future village <laughs> village voices, uh, leave them in the comments or you can go to our Instagram page and fill out the form that's in the link tree. And yes, thank you for tuning in and remember to keep creating a village wherever you go. Bye. Bye-bye.